So the, you find the diuretics effect uh, prior to an event, the week before an event, and describe the, the dosage pattern of uh, the specific uh, L-Dactone you utilize. Right. Um, is there any masking agent to... to For L-Dactone, I, I don't believe so, but I... Uh, um, on the diuretic, um, before I answer that, incidentally, I did have... Now, explain how I took the dosages the first time. I had them written down. Now, the next time I gave L-Dactone, it was a higher dosage. And I didn't clarify that it was a higher dosage. I just assumed that it was the same thing I got before. It was twice the amount. So I followed the same procedure. Um, and on the day of the show, I looked great, but I was sick to my sick. I could barely carve up. I was nauseated. I could barely, you know, take in my, my uh, carbohydrates to fill my, my physique out. Um, I could barely eat. Even after the prejudging, I was so nauseated I could barely get, uh, conduct an interview. I just wanted to be left alone. I got back to my hotel room, and it was so hard to eat food. And it was, you know, something that I would otherwise uh, find really palatable, delicious. Um, and I could barely get it in. I could barely drink water and everything. And then I realized later that it was because I had taken too much, too much. And, and I also took uh, herbal energy tablets to have the, the stamina to pose on stage. So herbs on your stomach, you know, on an empty stomach, uh, combined with your, your electrolytes being topsy-turvy, I was just, I've never felt sicker at a competition. And, and later I learned that that's what it was. It was from diuretics. And I thought I was following everything to the, to the letter, but I neglected to make sure to confirm what I had taken before and confirm, uh, you know, what I was taking this time. So um, there's an incident of my own personal um, um, experience that was pretty harrowing. Um, now, you asked me something Masking just now. agents. Masking agents. Or diuretics. Okay. Since those are the only things that uh, on the hot top pro shows you're being tested for. Now, the, the list is, is, is quite extensive, but there's always a couple of things that aren't up there. Um, I, this year, uh, learned of something that um, one of the reigning pros, if not the reigning pro, um, was, uh, now this was said, um, I can't swear to it, this was told to me, I'm not trying to gossip, but I'm just stating what someone uh, mentioned to me. And since then I've, uh, you know, learned that the person that trained him for it um, has a few tricks up his sleeve. Uh, it's heard that he used a, and you'll find that this is, I'm not the only person that knows about this. This is, and, and, and I shouldn't have known about it. You know what I mean? So it was just being discussed behind, you know, oh, yeah, he used this. That's why he looked shoulders above everybody else at this show and at that show. Mm -hmm. An IV drip. Now, I don't know exactly how it works, but there's something in that uh, they drip an IV into the arm, like the night before the show. Um, I've also heard mention from the same source of expertise that uh, some blood dope might have been uh, might have been uh, used or incorporated, or that could be how they made that work. Um, IV drip would be in regards intravenous. To sorry, hand in front of my face again. Intravenous drip into the arm. Um, what specific drug at this? Um, I I can't remember the name. It's some weird name, and uh, an M. There's also a diuretic that is not detectable. It begins with an M. That, uh, so this would be a means to get around the test? This is a means to get around so the test. diuretics. Yes. I see. And this guy, one hands down, of course he's like one of the sport's favorite sons, according to this sanctioning body. Um, you know, he can do no wrong. But he was head and shoulders, a phenomenal shape. Deserved the win. He looked great. 
you know, that year, um, or those two shows. And I was in those shows, but he looked great. He looked phenomenal. He deserved to win. He was the best man that day. Um, but an IV, you know how, even, even this is something you haven't done, but oh. uh, you're pretty sure this is what's some of the top guys are doing. Yes, and since then, um, the, the guy that's been uh, mentoring him on it has been um, um, helping out a few other professionals and sort of expanding his stable and becoming sort of a guru, if you will. Do you have any idea what's in the IV drip? Uh, uh, you know, told me, but it, it's like something I never heard of, yeah. and I only heard it about two or three times. And um, a lot's gone on, you know, since then. And I, I wish I could recall that. Yeah, I'd state it right here. You mentioned before, real quick, uh, escaline and another acicaline. drug. Acicaline and something similar to that? Yes. Acicaline is an inflammatory uh, water-based irritant that's injected uh, directly into the muscle. Um, before the event, primarily? Before, well, actually, a couple of days or before. Okay. I mean, even the same guy that I, um, I just mentioned about the, the IV drip, in 93, um, he was winning. Um, it was said that he used to hit each body part with it. Now, uh, the, new, the other drug that you're talking about, did it like that, that drug? Okay, now that's uh, newer. Called? It's called Sintol. What would be like the, uh, how, how many cc's would you put into a muscle, like the bicep? I think you would put about half um, per time. What have you done? I've never used that. Okay. That's, that's an out. And, you know, it's been offered to me, you know. Okay, but let's go with the acicline then. Uh, the acicline I have, I have used. How many cc's in a bicep or? One. Okay. I mean, I'm not trying to. You would never use like 10 or 20 oh, cc's? No, no. I think that'd be a big, you'd have a leg, <laughs> and a big deformed um, trunk. Do you find it actually does increase the muscle size upon injection site what immediately? It, uh, yes. Yes, and, and not to a great d degree, but then again, I never try to blow up my entire muscle. I, if, if my outer bicep, I, I wanted to be a little bit uh, more fuller on that day, I would hit it there, and it would give the desired effect. And it was temporary. One thing that I would like to, to touch on and emphasize is that uh, the whole reason that I, I'm, I'm discussing this here today is because I, I really believe that this, this tape will help some people, and, and I wanted to educate them. Not to paint the athletes out as, as Frankenstein monsters, um, it, because it's not about, I mean, I, I've, I'm definitely as, as in as anyone, um, but there's a lot of things that I won't do for the sport, and also the feeling of being drawn into it and feeling that you must do this in order to re remain competitive. And that's what I think is the real shame, is how far do we have to go in order to be uh, uh, deemed great champions? And, and what, you know, when did being healthy and looking good uh, cease and we step into uh, chemical warfare so much that, that we don't even look at, at the effects and what will we accept in terms of what we will do and how far will that go? I, I have come personally, I've dreaded having to stick myself. Coming to a competition, you, when you get leaner and leaner, you get sore from the, the injection sites. So you have to change the injection site. Yes, and you start looking for, for ow, that still hurts, you know. And closer to a show, the water-based drugs are in and out of your system faster, so you, you have to do them every other day instead of just twice a week. Um, it's a dread. It's a sense of dread. It's something that I hate having to do. Um, and I, I hate the negative connotation of, of being along with it. I, I enjoy training. Um, I always have. I enjoy the lifestyle and the look, um, uh, the positive things that it's brought me. But one thing I, I honestly hate, and this is from the heart, is having to address the issue to people that don't understand what I've been through or don't know me as a person or how hard I've worked. 
and they see some short expose on steroids and you know they think they're being brilliant by going ah oh, steroids you think steroids right and it's like i don't want to discuss it with you you're a moron i mean you you don't know what you're talking about so you know if i could discuss it and and actually teach you something then it would be worth the, worth discussing with you but the negative connotation that goes along with it i consider myself a hard working professional athlete but i don't enjoy carrying the stigma of being a steroid user and I, I, I'm not one prone to roid rages and all of this and that. Does that exist? Um, I think that it, like some other drugs, may magnify who you are. If you're a jackass without them, then you'll be twice the jackass on certain, uh, uh, under certain conditions. Now, the average Joe, if he hasn't eaten in three hours, he's going to be cranky. But the average grandma that hasn't eaten in three hours will be a little, you know, <laughs> erratic around the edges, you know. But um, I, I really uh, believe that this tape will, will help people. Coming up uh, as a, a youth, I didn't, uh, all I saw was that I wanted to be a professional. And it has progressed quite, uh, quite a bit since that time. But I, I do want people to not view it as, oh, these guys are freaks and monsters and drug heads, because it's not that simple. Uh, there's a lot of fine athletes and a lot of fine people in the sport, but it's just a shame that we're drawn down this road. And the sad part is the establishment, um, the officials, uh, the administration, the powers that be, they're just kind of standing by long enough to make the money. And I believe that if our health was such an issue, naturally they're testing for diuretics because they don't want anyone else dying. And if they're emphasizing that it's for our own good and for our health, why aren't they testing for steroids? Because we make much better products and sell many more magazines with this, this, the enhancement of steroids than without. I personally think the team champions would be, uh, would be at the top because of hard work and genetics and, and diligence and, and nutrition and what have you. Um, so with that, um, I just wanted to, you know, contribute to maybe enlightening somebody about it and not in a negative way because one thing I do resent personally is someone that has no genetics, they've tried to win at bodybuilding at a certain level, and just didn't have what it takes. And then they go on this steroid, anti-steroid crusade, where they slam pro bodybuilding, and they call us muscle heads, and they call us drug monsters, and all of this. But they tried to do the same thing, and failed, and then decided to go on a crusade. I really resent that a lot. You know, there's magazines, and there are people that always have to bash, um, and that's I just that's just a pet peeve that I, I don't have much respect for. But um, you know I thank you for uh, listening, and I, and I hope that uh, thank you. Appreciate your uh, your involvement very much, uh -huh. and hopefully we will educate and we will teach uh, some of the up and coming guys really what it's all about, and not to expose the dirty laundry of sport of uh, sport form of bodybuilding or other sports, but to make a difference in the sense that we educate and maybe there's less abusive procedures they will follow and at least get the clear, the real understanding of uh, what the sport has evolved to uh, at this point because it's something that we, in fact, we do love and it's where we live, it's where we come from, it's our home, it's our neighborhood and we care about and at this point uh, it's time I think somebody really addresses the subject and talks about the way it really is and what's honestly happening, happening in hopes that uh, there will be less abusive procedures, less deaths in the sport, and more education, uh, and uh, hopefully, maybe, um, as, as I said, less use, and, and maybe if the testing were to get real, and it could be real, I understand this, and the, the IOC, IOC is increasing their standards, uh, maybe there'll be a level playing field, and it will be uh, a lot safer to compete in today's environment, which at this point, as you referred to, chemical warfare, and that's the reason for this tape. Uh, and again, it's not to expose 
the dirty laundry to expose athletes by any means. It's merely to educate and to help uh, the problem and to help alleviate some of the problems involved in our sport. Well, I appreciate you being here very much, and I, uh, I want you to know, and uh, you know, as the audience does know at this point, that your, your identity is completely disguised and you are not recognizable. So I invite you to speak freely and openly and honestly, and really, uh, I know you're not used to doing that probably, but uh, the nature of this video uh, is just that, uh, approach, addressing the issues in, in terms of honesty. Uh, but uh, important to do that, mainly because we can make a difference to the viewer. I mean, for the first time, I think they can hear the issues presented in terms of reality rather than avoiding the issue, pretending it doesn't exist, and, right. and, or lying to the, the, you know, the up-and-coming uh, athletes who are vying for position in, in various sport form. Right. Okay? So um, I guess my first question to you would be, um, what made you decide, what, what situation in your life made you decide that uh, you were going to use steroids? Well, uh, when I was... 16 years old, I did my first bodybuilding show. I had been training since I was like 14. I was doing like upper body and kind of skipping out on legs and mm -hmm. stuff like mm -hmm. that. And, and so I realized that, you know, in, uh, uh, well, this, this uh, gym was putting on a contest in Fort Ord. It was like some military contest or whatever. Mm -hmm. And my dad was in the military, so mm -hmm. I went in it as a teenager, 16, and it was just me and another uh, kid. And so I had won. So that was kind of like... The top, you know, I won, and people were telling me, hey, you, you know, you look good, you keep doing them. As you get older, you'll, you'll get better. So I started training hard. I didn't know nothing about steroids. I'd heard about them and stuff, but, you know, I didn't really, you know, from a small town where I was from, um, you know, just didn't hear too often about what, what was going on and not anything about any knowledge about any other drug. But uh, when I, uh, I competed again for the year later at 17, I did a... a a Mr. California teenage show, and um, it was an AAU contest. And the kid that won it, he was 19, and I was 17. And this kid looked so incredible. I mean, he he could have. I think he did win the men's open class too. Wow. And uh, he just looked. I was just like was shocked that a 19 year old looked like that. That's what I knew in my head. I I would rather you know I wanted to take the risk. I, you know, it wasn't going to be, that, I didn't think it was that big of a risk. Mm -hmm. So I, I just figured I need to do something to get that big by the time I'm 19. Okay, so you were 19 when you initiated uh, your right. first program. Yeah. Okay. And uh, at that time, the people that I, uh, I, you know, I didn't know, I didn't ask for and stuff. You go into a gym and somebody says, hey, you want this? And I've had that approach to me when I was younger, and I said no. But when uh, it happened again, the guy... Uh, he gave me some, uh, I think it was some testosterone, um, cypionate, and um, and I think some DECA, mm -hmm. and uh, and he told me, he gave me one Cestanon shot, and this is a booster. You take this, and two weeks later, and he's going to just totally change you. <laughs> so here I am, taking this stuff, and I find out later it's all sesame oil, because the guy was running fake stuff, and, uh, and then that's... Uh, so I, I figured my first cycle was fake, and mm -hmm. I think that just wanting to, wanting it to work, I, I, I trained harder that motor, and, uh, and it worked. I mean, I did get bigger, mm -hmm. but uh, I think maybe one of the drugs was good, which which probably was the test. To, to start with, yeah, I, got, it? Um, I think it was Cipionate. Okay. Because yeah, I, I did get a little puffy, and I gained, uh, gained like 20, 20 pounds. You know, and, and it wasn't really hard muscle, it was just, you know, bloated puffiness and stuff like that because I didn't know how to eat right. I didn't know how to, you know, diet. I didn't know how much protein I should have taken, in, took in or stuff. I didn't do that much reading up on it. Mm -hmm. Kind of just went by what everybody was, you know, saying. Okay, I guess at this point uh, you mentioned sipinate being uh, something you responded well, very favorably to. Right. Uh, testosterone, sipinate. Are there are, what other drugs would, do, do you have in your... I guess uh, your mind at this point and relate to us that you found. Um, Winstrel was uh, one of the favorites mm -hmm. that I, I, I loved it. I mean, I, I, I found out, uh, you know, after a few contests um, that I took, uh, I had a friend of mine tell me that that's all he took and he looked incredible mm -hmm. and actually he was a professional and, uh, you know, 
these guys aren't going to tell you what they take and stuff. And they kind of hide it and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I've imagined for a couple of years that Winstrel was all he took. You know, Winstrel will be that, that. You know, you take that and that's it. So I was just taking that and maybe, you know, cycling it with some DECA mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, a couple, maybe, I tried Anadrol, like 19, 19 tabs of it and I started getting headaches and stuff, so I dropped that. I was real scared of the, the steroids and stuff. Um, I guess when, when you started putting together your first constructive cycle, um, what, the drugs were siphonate or no? Yeah. Siphonate, how much, how much siphonate in terms of dosage per day? Um, I, and- I did, uh, 200 milligrams twice a week. Okay. And then I did uh, Winstrel one uh, cc every every other day. Okay. And then I uh, I did that for uh, a couple of shows until I was like 21, 22, and then that's when I uh, I moved to Southern California, and that's when I really got the knowledge of, of what to take and what these guys were doing to look like the you know what mm-hmm. they did, and uh, I think my 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 off season cycle was like. Uh, 200 milligrams or 250 milligrams uh, twice a week of cestanon, um, 200 milligrams twice a week of uh, I think it was an anth- ananthate, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and then it would be uh, like um, five or six anavar twice a day, mm-hmm. every day, mm-hmm. and I'd do that up until uh, until like six six to eight weeks out from a show, and then I'd just switch it to Winstrel. And then um, Winstrel, Primaballin, and Parabolin. Okay. And I take uh, two shots of Parabolin, which were 76 milligrams. Mm-hmm. I take that a, a week with uh, one every three days of Primaballin, and, and I take Winstrel one cc a, d- a day. A day. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, and then as I got on with uh, the shows, um, then I just kind of learned about uh, diuretics and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, we'll go into that for uh, in a point in a moment. We'll go into that, but. Did you stop your drug intake prior to the show ever, or is that a consideration? Um, yeah, I, I did it. I stopped everything. I turned, uh, I turned everything out of my, like the last week. Mm-hmm. The last week, I get get off of everything. Okay. Did you cycle the? Are you up and down, or just? And I, I maybe, I might have done that one or twice, but normally I would just stick to a certain dosage, and that's all. I'd run it all the way through for like twelve weeks. Up until the last week before the show. Right. Okay. I see. Okay, so off season. Um, uh, let's say, uh, how long do you pre- did you prepare for for a show usually, or do um, you prepare? Usually sixteen weeks. Okay, uh, so if you're preparing sixteen weeks or four months, uh, that's the on as you're calling right, it. Yes. Right. Right so, before a show. Okay, uh, and then the off season. Actually, I take more stuff before a show than I would in the off season. Uh huh. Off season, I would just stick to basic drugs like you know test and and uh, maybe. Um, how, or you know what I was taking halitestin okay. right before the show too, but uh, I usually stick with test and Winstrel. You know, I liked Winstrel. Mm-hmm. I just did something for. Mm-hmm. It was the veterinarian kind. Right, uh, Winstrel V. Yeah, Winstrel V. So did there may be some years then where you would be on uh, some form of steroid all year long. I think it would be mostly Winstrel all year round, but the other ones I would, I'd get on, like the test, any form of test or androgen, I would get on for eight weeks, and then I'd get off for like at least eight weeks. Mm-hmm. But I'd stay on Winstrel all year round. I see, I see. Okay. Dosages went up to, what you, you just went over some dosages. Uh, do you have a number as far as? A, C, a, a CC of Winstrel, uh, 16 weeks out uh, from a contest every day, and then in the off season, just uh, one CC every other day. Okay. Was there a, uh, a weekly um, or a daily uh, milligram dosage that you, a formula you had or no, not really? not really. I just okay. uh, went by how many I had and how I wanted to make them last. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, pretty basic. I understand. I've, I've heard a lot of guys out there that, you know, they knew, knew exactly what they were doing every day. Mm-hmm. I did that once and, uh, you know, it's just too confusing. Mm-hmm. I feel like your butt's a pin cushion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I imagine. Um, okay, well, besides, uh, you know, the steroids, of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, a lot of uh, discussion in the magazines and in the, in the industry is about the growth hormone. Is that something you've ever utilized, and if so, do you find it effective? I've used it. I used it twice. Um, the first time I had a friend give it to me with no money, just said, here, I want you to do good. He gave me, uh, like, I think $3,000 of the stuff. 
So how many cc's did you take a day of that? Um, actually, I took four I use. I use. I use, I use a day, four, four I use okay. a day. And, um, prior to the show? I was pr prior to the show, and, and I did a show before without it, and then I did a show with it, and I gained like nine pounds, and it was harder and more cut mm. and bigger than, than I was three months before when I didn't have it. Mm. So you found but it? I felt, yeah, felt really good, but that was the only time. Mm -hmm. That was the only time I ever felt like that. Then the other times, I did it, and it just didn't do the same. Maybe uh. it was fake or something. Mm -hmm. But I think the first time I did it was Protro, mm -hmm. the 92 amino acid. Mm -hmm. And I guess the 91 is the most popular mm -hmm. they use nowadays. So uh, supposedly that wasn't supposed to be the one that works good, but it worked great for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. It seems like everything uh, we've been talking to, a few different athletes all day, everyone has a similar feelings about certain things, but some diversified situations. Imagine being a d uh, chemistry, a different body, uh, everyone responds differently to a degree, to a give, give a different system, yeah. given to a different system of intake. Um, okay, uh, well, uh, does insulin for you go along with GH, or is that a consideration? I've, I've never tried insulin. Okay. I've, I've maybe taken a couple of units or whatever, but it never did what everybody was doing. Mm -hmm. Never did that for me, and I didn't want to go higher. Just kind of really scared of it. So many people say that uh, mm -hmm. you can turn diabetic from mm -hmm. it, and uh, I just didn't want to take that risk. So primarily then the steroids with the GH. Right, right. And then I heard of IGF-1 and stuff, yeah. and I never, I never tried that either. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Uh, well, next I'd like to sort of segue into uh, medics. I mean, is there any, any usage you've followed or any uh, I took, um, right before the show, I take, uh, I was taking L-Dactone, mm -hmm. um, seven days out, um, I think one in the morning, one in the afternoon, mm -hmm. up until the show, and then I take, uh, I think a diazide or l -dactazide, um, on Friday afternoon and Friday night before I go to bed, and then mm -hmm. however I looked in the morning, I would determine if I need another one or not. Mm -hmm. Then I use other methods, like, you know, um, the Epsom salt baths and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Interesting. It's just soak out the, the water. Mm -hmm. One time I did it too long and I, uh, I started uh, puking, throwing up, and I couldn't stop. Mm -hmm. So I had to take one of those um, meal replacement drinks really fast mm -hmm. and digest in my body and then it just stopped. Mm -hmm. That was perfect. I felt like I was going to die though. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Any problems with diuretics uh, ever? Mm, no, because I've always been kind of shy on that. I, mm. I never, you know, I've seen guys drop it backstage and stuff, and, and yeah. I just didn't. I thought that would be more, more embarrassing, you know. Mm -hmm. I just, I just never got that far into it. How about as far as um, any, you know, uh, scary ep or frightening episodes with with any of the drugs at all? I mean, uh, um, yeah, I had uh, with Winstrel. I've had two. Uh, two staph infections that I had to have cut out and drained. From injecting from injecting the same area? Yep, yeah, same area. Um, you know, running out of needles, mm. you know, and not being able to find any more, so you use the same one over and over, trying to use alcohol to clean it out, and sometimes it just doesn't do it. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's just, sometimes it's just dry, and you can't get nothing. Mm -hmm. Nobody has anything, so. Mm -hmm. So I had uh, two operations on that. And then, um, that was pretty much it. All the other things, uh, I've heard other guys, mm -hmm. you know, puking up blood and stuff and getting bloody noses from Anadrol and yeah. stuff like that, but that's never happened to me. I've just never abused the drug. Drugs, I, I, I think using them and abusing them is different. And, mm -hmm. I mean, probably before a show, it's probably the only time I abuse if I were mm -hmm. more than I really need just because I want to win so bad. Are there any, um, non-steroidal or non-over-the-counter uh, drugs that you find effective, like Andro or uh, GH uh, enhancers? Or um, Actually, I've never even really taken minerals and vitamins and stuff like mm -hmm. this until uh, like the first or the last uh, five, six years before I figured if they were over-the-counter, they didn't work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's, that's pretty much that. And then... Uh, I, I think, like, you know, 
uh, amino acids and stuff like that. I'll just throw in, you know, just chuck them. Just makes me feel good to know that maybe I'm getting my extra protein mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But I never really got technical with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, in the magazines, uh, uh, how accurate do you think the magazines are when they, re they report about the, the extent of drug use in, in the sport and bodybuilding? Do you think they're accurate or? Um, I, well, yeah, I guess so. I mean, it depends on what kind of article they're writing. I mean, if mm -hmm. they're trying to scare somebody, yeah, there are people out there that that do some crazy stuff. I, I mean, I know a guy that uh, he, he was taking so much stuff, he started doing squats, and he was bleeding out his ears, and he still wanted to complete the, the, the <laughs> set. <laughs> and uh, he was like, he was taking like six cc's of Cessnon, like, 10 and a draw in the morning, 10 at night. I mean, the guy was loading up on so much stuff, and he, he wasn't even a bodybuilder. He was just a skinny little kid that just wanted to get big and huge, and he, his friend told him to take this, and he'll grow, and he just thought more was better, and he just started going off. <laughs> when I heard about that, I just couldn't believe it. You know, it's just ridiculous. How about uh, like things like uh, blocking agents? Uh... Uh, have you ever considered those or used those? Um, you mean like uh, Noladex? Noladex. Uh, um, oh, what's the other one? Clomid. Clomid, no. Uh, HCG, things to... Yeah, I've, uh, I've heard of use, using HCG while you're on your cycle. Mm -hmm. Helps a great deal for your body's own natural testosterone mm -hmm. to kick in, but... You know, in this sport, you're just, you're just struggling to get what you need. You know, and, and who has it, and if you can afford it, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, I mean, I think little things like that, you seem to bypass most of the time. But when it gets, when you get ready for a show, it's one of those, you know, things that you, you might need to to have just to get that edge. So, I mean, like Novadex or, or what's that other one? Um, Clomid Novadex. You know, it's like Novadex. It's uh, HCG. Uh, uh, it's a blocker. It's, that's the one Proviron. I use. Proviron, that's yeah. the one I used. Right. I, I used that, and uh, it seemed to work good. Mm. Kept the water off. And With the, when you were taking steroids? Right, just prior to a con, six to eight weeks. Mm. Uh, from, from In terms contest. of, um, uh, what do you? I used to have a problem with Gyno. Okay. Until I got it cut out. I see. <laughs> okay, right. So that I had to, I mean, I was really always shy off of, uh, that's what kept me away from a lot of testosterones mm. and, and androgenics. I mean, most of the time, I mean, my theory was basically, um, if you're going to get on a stack or a cycle, I was always in, say, two anabolics and one androgen. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that, that's always worked for me. And I've heard other guys doing two androgens and, you know, one anabolic. And, you know, I just, I just never liked that puffy, zitty kind of mm -hmm. fat look, you mm -hmm. know, it just never really did anything for me. And, uh, I mean, there was a couple times I got to that point and, you know, I'd, I'd lose feeling in my hands and in my arms, and you know, I'd, my my legs would fall asleep. You know, mm -hmm. I'd always be in some uncomfortable position. Mm -hmm. and it was because of the water retention, and, and mm -hmm. uh, the, I was so uncomfortable. So I, I basically stayed off of the the androgens a lot and, and just stuck with the anabolics. They kept me hard. They kept the body fat down. Um, I always, you know, felt good, good, great pumps in the gym. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like it was in my circulation in my arms or, or any other, other body mm -hmm. parts, so I stuck with the, the anabolics. Mm -hmm. uh, the Proviron, you mentioned, uh, the main uh, effect of that, which was useful to your program, was the fact that it, what, it, it blocked the estrogen? Um, yeah, well, f from what they say, yeah. I mean, I, you, know, you really don't know what the right. drug is actually doing because it's so long for it to, to uh, you know, you know, aromatize or whatever in your body, but, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, they said, I was told that it, it blocks off the estrogen from, mm -hmm. from you know, mm -hmm. making it in your body, and, uh, and it also had some anabolic effects, mm -hmm. so that was helping from catabolic effects from, mm -hmm. from eating the muscle and stuff like that, so I, I took that into hand, you know, why not use that instead of Novlex, which was just a blocker, why not mm -hmm. have both, both worlds, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I understand. Um, your opinion of the, the roid rage syndrome, is that something that really does occur? You know what, I, I, my opinion is, it, I think a lot of guys are weak, 
when it comes in, in the mind, and I, I think they use that as an excuse. Yes, it may, it might. I mean, I've, I've controlled it pretty good. I, I've never, I don't think I consider myself having roid rages even when I'm on and stuff, because I, I know how it should feel and what I'm feeling, and, and but I, I think maybe when you're unaware of what you're on and it's doing and stuff, maybe you would tend to uh, get angry and overdo it. Mm -hmm. But maybe in the younger crowd, but if you know what you're doing and you know what you're taking, I think you can control it. But I think a lot of people out there want, they want to be, you know, stronger. You know, I, I don't know, but maybe it's a macho thing or something. I, I, I just never, just really didn't connect with me. Mm -hmm. You know, when they, I mean, even, especially when a woman uses it against you, man, that, I mean, you get pissed off and it isn't so much the drugs, it's just, mm -hmm. It's just in an argument, and then they start pointing the right, finger. You right. know, so you're a roid. You're, you're on those roids, man. Those roids are making you this way, and you're just like, no, mm -hmm. <laughs> no it's mm -hmm. not. But yeah, it's it's a lose lose situation when that comes around. But you know, obviously, I I think you, you you probably feel that steroids are necessary and GH is necessary to to some degree to compete in on today's stage. Exactly. Yeah. But when they're taking out of hand, then that's when the road rages and all the other side effects mm -hmm. probably happen. Mm -hmm. How about things like um, the esculine, where they inject into uh, the muscle for temporary uh, uh, inflammatory, yeah, inflammatory type drugs? Um, I've tried that. Actually. In fact, it just, I don't know if I'm not putting it in right or what, but uh, these guys have heard they inject themselves everywhere about, mm -hmm. uh, you know, weak points that they have in their body mm -hmm. and stuff, but. Uh, um, I don't know. I think it's just a cheating way of doing it. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you can't do it, you know, nat not naturally, but if you can't do it that way, and try to form your body by building it, you know, it's, it's just cheating, you know. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't look right anyways, because it takes away the cuts anyway, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can usually tell who's pumping their stuff up with, you know, stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't like the look. I, just, I like the, you know, the good look, you know. Mm -hmm. I understand. I guess that would probably be the same uh, thing as doing implants to some degree. It looks yeah. like. Is it really, it's not real. Mm -hmm. Again, it doesn't look good when it's flexed. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe to some people it does, but uh, I'm not going to go that far into competing. You know? mm -hmm. Okay. Steroids is bad enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In your opinion, do you feel that the bodybuilding stage, uh, that, that we're pushing genetics to the ultimate edge? Yeah. I think it's going a little too far. I think uh, if you would compare the 80s or the you know, 70s and 80s bodybuilders compared to the 90s, um, they're, they're, I think the judging is basically pushing people people you know, out, out, out the door, man. They're, they're croaking because mm -hmm. it's just a certain look that they want to look like, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, they need to take it down some. So what you're saying is that judges are judging the drug look. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you gotta give him a drug look to do well, right? Right, That's, right. Okay, I'm just, I'm not, I don't mean to paraphrase you, but it, it's... Yeah, it's the drug look, basically. I mean, you can tell who's doing more and who's not. Mm -hmm. Would you go far as to say it's chemical warfare? Yeah, <laughs> in, in all sports, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not just bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Olympics, they got ways of disguising these drugs, mm -hmm. and, and uh, they're the best at it anyway, so mm -hmm. they got hired people to do this, so... Mm. We're the rug rats compared to this. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know what you're saying. Okay, uh, well, is there any other comments you'd care to share with uh, our viewers and along the lines of, I mean, you've said quite a bit already, is there anything else that you care to add? Um, you know, it's just steroids are, you know, they're just like any other drug. I mean, you can get addicted to it. Most of the bodybuilders that you see that are on them are pretty much addicted to them because they just don't want to stop looking the way they do. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're going to take steroids, I think man, you need to be mentally prepared for, you know, the consequences that they come with. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if you abuse your body and you take more sh stuff than you sh you know if you're doing something right or wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh, trying it and, and loading it up is two different things. You just got to be careful. Because mm -hmm. no, nobody's going to tell you what to do, but uh, you definitely need to be smart about it. I guess the question I have for you at this point would be, uh, what is your formula for success, and how do you, how would, what would you 
How can you, can you put that in a few statements? Um, I think look in the mirror, find, a, find somebody in a magazine that you resemble or what you would like to look like. And, you know, go to the gym, start out, start working out, and start noticing, you know, gains in, in your body and, and uh, just give it 100% if, you know, but just know how to supplement your, your bodybuilding with your lifestyle so that you don't let it overpower your, your whole life and make people miserable and your, <laughs> you know, the ones that love you and stuff like that because that tends to happen a lot. As far as the... As far as like, you know, being so dedicated that you can't do anything in your life. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, putting an uh, hour and a half you need to be intense is in the gym and that's it. And then outside of that, it's just eating and dedicate yourself to, you know, eating good foods and a lot of protein. And uh, it was pretty, you, you can have fun with it and uh, don't be miserable about it, doing it. Um, well, one question I have for you is, that, do you feel that, uh, you know, whoever has the most money and or the most GH and related drugs is the winner or could be the winner? Of course, because it's just like any kind of a like car race or, or, or jet ski race. Anybody that has the, the more technology and the more money to spend on that engine, you basically, you can afford more horsepower, so you're going to win the race. You know, that's, that has a lot to do with bodybuilding and any other sport. It's, uh, it's who has the the resources, mm -hmm. most resources, and who can afford the resources. Mm -hmm. It's really, uh, and it takes genetics, but the people that do have the genetics, those are the people that can afford that stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just keep getting, it's like the rich keep getting richer and the poor get, keep getting poorer. That's <laughs> <laughs> an interesting point. So sort of like building a, a race engine almost. Uh, right. If you're winning at the track and... I mean, you can't put in regular gas, you got to put in super and let it. Mm -hmm. If you can afford super and let it, if it's like, you know, mm -hmm. and you got a connection on that, and, uh, then, you know, you're going to be a better athlete. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, that's where the strategy is. That's why you don't hear anybody talking about what they do with the drugs and what they do with the diet and all that kind of stuff. They, they kind of, they do tell you, they lead you around in another direction. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, nobody really wants to tell you. Yeah, yeah which is they're secure with themselves and they really don't care. Yeah. yeah. But then again, I, you know, I mean, that's again the purpose of this this uh, video production is to address it like it, in terms of what's really happening right. and uh, say things like we were not able to say in other forms. Yeah. Well, people don't want to hear it either. And yeah. I think it's BS because a lot of guys when they do tell you they, they right. BS a lot. Right. 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 Exactly. Yeah. That's not the truth. Um. In terms of uh, nutritional ratio, nutritional ratios, protein related to carbohydrates and fats, uh, uh, do you have any uh, ideas or strong feelings about uh, those ratios? Usually, when I'm trying to stay lean in the off season, let's say I'm off of everything, um, trying to clean myself out, I'll stick more to lighter foods like chicken, fish, uh, you know, any kind of shellfish and stuff like that, and uh, potatoes and rice. And then when I'm on like uh, my cycling for you know getting bigger for the contest and stuff, I'll stick more to red meats, um, still with the rice, maybe up my fats a little more, and then uh, kicking the aerobics is when I just start kicking in all the protein. I'll just take in mostly protein, and I'll kind of uh, like in the morning I'll have uh, a little bit mostly of my carbs and stuff. I have like a lot of egg egg whites and egg yolks with it whole eggs and then uh, maybe some uh, like a small bowl of oatmeal and some fruit and then the next meal I'll have just a protein shake and then maybe do a couple scoops of peanut butter or and then for lunch maybe a steak and a really fat steak or something like that and maybe a potato and some vegetables and then after that I'll just keep eating more protein protein shakes and, and uh, like more chicken and rice maybe right before I work out and then after that just protein and vegetables. Uh, in terms of calories per day. It varies from off season to off season, I, I assume. I take it about, uh, in off season I really don't count. I don't count the okay. calories. I just eat um, the protein and then whatever fats in there is just in there. You know, and then I'm, if I need to cut back or get leaner, if I feel a little fat, I'll just <laughs> cut out the carbs. I won't eat the carbs. I'll just have like maybe a couple chicken breasts and some salad or something. And uh, if I need to get fat from that, I'll just maybe switch it to a steak or something if I, if I feel like 
you know, I'm, I'm getting too lean or, you know, if I feel like my muscles aren't full enough, so I'll try to get some of that uh, creatine out of the steak and mm -hmm. pump up a little bit. It makes me feel a little harder and bigger. Each food just does different stuff to me. And, and whatever mood I'm in or whatever, how I feel my body feels, I kind of just judge it by that and I eat whatever I think I need. It's okay. just after all these years, you kind of figure out what you, you know, you run on. Do you count calories before show? No, I never count calories. I never you write down anything. Like so I feel like if, you know, your body's different. I mean, you don't burn the same amount right. of calories every day. Why should you eat the same amount? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you don't really so, record uh, grams of protein, carbohydrates, or fat. You don't have those grams recorded. And um, no, pretty much okay. diet, especially when you know when I'm on GH. It's pretty much mm. it, you know only probably the last week, the last week prior to the show, I do. I'm more self-conscious of, of of the amount of chicken breast and the, the amount of carbs and the amount of fat. I'll, I'll take, uh, you know, two tablespoons of peanut butter and stuff, and I'll have that same amount every mm -hmm. day, you know what I mean? And, uh, and then if I need to adjust anything, I just adjust to, um, you know, either pose a little harder that day mm -hmm. uh, or sweat a little bit more or burn a little more calories, and I just keep everything else the same. You mentioned the GH, though. When you're on GH, you feel you can almost eat anything you want? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 16 weeks out from the show when I did that one show. Uh, yeah, I, I was eating cake, ice cream after my meals and stuff. And, and it was weird because if I didn't eat that, I felt like I was doing like away. And so it's like, you know, I heard other people doing this too. And, and I was just getting harder and looking better and better. And it was, wow. it was amazing. I was tripping. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, that's where you get addicted to the drugs because you do see how they really work, especially... Right, right before a show, mm -hmm. you see the difference what it does to you, and that's what uh, pretty much convinces you that uh, saying no doesn't mean no. <laughs> what do you mean saying no doesn't mean no? <laughs> yeah, let's say no, say no to drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for helping us out today. We're going to address a lot of sensitive issues today, and uh, I want to assure you that your identity will be protected in terms of the viewing audience, okay? It's important to me, otherwise I wouldn't agree to do this. Um, so often, the issue uh, is not addressed. The, fact, the steroid issue in all sport form today is avoided, not addressed, not talked about as if it doesn't exist. And having seen a lot of close friends of mine encounter some problems recently, I, uh, I feel personally, strongly, the issue should be addressed in terms of honesty, in terms of education for future upcoming athletes, uh, you know, and that's not done enough. And so if we can do that today, which we will, by not exploiting uh, who, you, who, you're, who you really are, and if we openly and honestly, uh, that's the reason, uh, I would, that's the way I would like to proceed, and that's the reason I'm here in the first place, and I hope you understand that, and I, I do thank you very much for being here and agreeing to be candid with us, uh, of course, uh, with your identity completely disguised. Thanks. Thank you. Um, first of all, um, I, the question I have to ask you is, uh, what brought you to the steroid table in the first place? Well, it's, uh, when I was young, I always liked muscle. I was always uh, intrigued by strength and uh, the whole, you know, uh, cartoon character look of, of you know, the strength you know, just uh, just muscle in general, mm -hmm. and um, I didn't know much about anything that can, you know, help you get bigger or whatever, other than the protein drinks and the, the liver pills that, you know, that was available mm -hmm. uh, through the stores at the time, and uh, I was lifting weights uh, as a kid, uh, started at a young age, and uh, once I got to college, um, uh, someone pointed out uh, an individual who was uh, pretty large, and they said, yeah, he takes uh, anabolic steroids. And so right then and there, I was like, you know, okay, I got to find out what this mm -hmm. is about, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, <clears throat> I started reading about it and uh, looking at the, uh, different bodybuilders in the magazines and, you know, feeling, okay, this is what, you know, this is what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I read about it for a few years before I tried it. Mm -hmm. um, 
How old were you when you first started your first uh, steroid cycle? I was uh, 18. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I was, you, know, you were competing then? I competed before I took anything. I was, uh, I uh, trained for about five or so years, and I started competing for about uh, two years. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, you know, even when I found out about, uh, um, you know, people taking steroids, this and that, <clears throat> you know, I was like, man, maybe that's why I'm, you know, I'm taking second and not winning the, or something like mm -hmm. that. And I didn't, I didn't have any idea what was, uh, mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, what was behind, you know, getting that harder look of the muscle or losing more water between the muscle and the skin, mm -hmm. that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so it was basically, uh, in order to compete on the bodybuilding stage, if everyone else is doing it, and have to do it to get that edge. Is that, am I hearing you correctly? Basically, and, uh, and you know, I wanted to uh, see, you know, what would happen uh, if I took more, or if I took something, mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, just like everyone else was doing. So I, uh, but like I said, I, I tried to take the smarter route and at least be educated about what I was getting into. And, and so, that, you know, like I said, I read about it for a good two years, two and a half years mm -hmm. before I tried anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, again, proceeding with our uh, the th basic statements and thoughts we were aligning ourselves with, uh, I, my next question would be, what kind of steroids uh, by name have you found most effective in your training? Right now or back then? Uh, well, I, I guess all through the course of your, your career. Well, uh, the, the Dynaball, <coughs> uh, which is always a, you know, like the first thing a lot of people take, mm -hmm. or, uh, uh, you know, a personal favorite, that uh, uh, Equipoise, mm -hmm. there's uh, it's a regular testosterone, different types of, types of testosterone, cypionate, and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Winstrel and uh, the more hardy drugs like uh, Say, uh, oh, oh, back then we can get stuff like uh, Finajet and mm -hmm. you know different things like that. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it, it's hard to find now. Is is a number of you know different kinds I tried, but uh, now you just go for what's available, what what you think is real, or mm -hmm. you know sometimes a lot of things not even real. What you're taking, and you thought you were taking something. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a diff different, definite concern. I can, I can understand that. Um, well, in, in so basically, it's, it's what's available and what you can get a hold of, and hopefully, you, it's, it's, it's real. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Is the European market ever come into play? And, and yeah, I mean, that's I've, yes, uh, I have pair ballings and uh, 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 prima balling. You used to be able to get like uh, back in the day. Mm -hmm. There's uh, the growth hormone, which uh, uh, it's now playing a key role in a lot of people's uh, um, arsenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's... Well, let's talk about, like, currently, what you're using and what kind of dosages you might be using in terms of uh, the androgenic and the anabolic material as such. Currently, I could take a uh, I'm only use about uh, nine hours a day. How long might that be for? Uh, as, as long as you can afford it. <laughs> See, I can't understand that. <laughs> uh, so prior to a contest only? Um, uh, it all depends. I've, I've used it in the off-season. I use it for competition. What's better results for you? Um, I like to use it uh, getting ready for competition because you uh, seem to burn a lot more body fat. And, uh, you know, your energy levels are high, your nitrogen levels are high. Your, mm -hmm. You know, you have, you're really energetic and you, you're strong and... Can you eat anything you want to when you're on growth hormone? Can what? Can you eat anything you want to? <clears throat> I do it anyway. <laughs> you know, I, uh, you know, I tend to be able to chew a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I've been getting really good results from it, yeah. Mm -hmm. That and uh, that's my favorite, like Anadrol, the different types of Anadrol that's available now. Uh, staying with it before we go <coughs> into the, uh, the steroids, uh, the, the GH or the growth hormone. Okay. Uh, it's like um, if you're, I, I realize that if you could take it all year long, you take it all year long. If, it would, if, it, if you could afford it, is that what you're 
Can I hear in your I mind? probably wouldn't myself. No, I'm not like a, a person who would, you know, that's my favorite thing to do is take a lot of drugs and, and mm -hmm. you know, this type of nature. I, I, uh, God, I, don't mean to, I don't mean to say it that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no. I, I don't know. I, I probably could if I were, you know, but that's, that's very expensive to do something like that. Well, before an event nowadays, mm -hmm. like say, and, and we don't want to name shit. How far out? Or? How far out? Maybe 12 weeks out. Okay. 12 weeks out and nine hours a day, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, I'm sure that's pricey for sure. Yeah. Um, um, and now moving on from the growth hormone, uh, stepping back into the steroid arena. Prior to an event, uh, are the steroids different than they would be in the off season? Um, you would cycle. <clears throat> well, personally, I would start out like 15 weeks out. Okay. If yeah. if I had my way. Okay, let's, let's go. 15 on. weeks out, and uh, I would use the heavier, more water tender type uh, substances about uh, like for the fur, like uh, the D ball, the Acupoise, Anadrol. Uh, I would use a uh, clinical wrong with that, and uh, I would start switching to more uh, harder, hardening things like uh, halotestin and uh, cytogen and uh, uh, Wenstrel and primobolin and uh, say uh, Cytomil, I would start that. Um, that's all in my, in my one, when I'm starting the phase and to getting a little harder. Which is like Usually like around eight to six weeks out. Okay, okay. I started like this cytogen, I would take it like for five weeks out or something like that. And um, oh, do you, and that's even pushing it a little bit. Okay. Uh, do you usually start with a lower dosage, go high, and then regress, or? I just, I don't take a lot of, my dose, uh, like for testosterone, I'll probably take about uh, maybe, uh, a couple cc's twice a week or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you know, a lot of people might take more or less or whatever, but testosterone, I, <clears throat> I've always, uh, or at a young age even, I was, I was told to take as little as possible to get the, uh, the effects that, that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was, that's my, f my first instinct is to do that with most of the drugs that I take. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I would, uh, you know, if, if four uses is not working for me, or if, like I say, 200 milligrams is not doing good for me, I'll be up to 400 milligrams, or, you know, or something like that. Or, do you have a formula, like a daily milligram allotment, <clears throat> or do you, do you want? I used to. I okay. used to. Now it's just like, okay, Mondays and, Mondays right. and Thursdays, I'm going to be doing this and that. Uh, I'm going to kick in this or whatever. And I'm also looking at the mirrors, and, you know, over the years, you learn how to, uh, you know, say, hey, I'm. I hold a lot more water from, you know, this might be the reason, so mm -hmm. I'm going to take that out and put this in, you know, sort of like a recipe or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, like, in the off-season with the, uh, the uh, more strength-enhancing, the bulk, bulking-type agents or drugs, uh, give me some idea, if you would, please, if you would share with us some idea of the dosages of those things, and then we'll move on to the pre-contest. Well, testosterone can be anywhere from, uh, say, 600 milligrams, 800 milligrams a week mm -hmm. of testosterone. Uh, prima bone, uh, I would like to take about, uh, say, 400 milligrams a week. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, like, equipoise, I would probably do, uh, like a full syringe, full twice, two, three times a week. Full it's, syringe, meaning it depend, like <laughs> say, like say, it depends. Like if if it's like a fifty milligram deal or whatever, but uh, you know, actually, point is not. It's not like really high on androgens, and in in it's like a, a mixture of both. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I tend to just bring all it in you know, CCs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. two to three times a week of that. Uh, if I was kicking in some uh, growth hormone, then I would do. Uh, Say uh, uh, four. I start off around four years uh, per day, mm -hmm. and work my way up to nine or so. Mm -hmm. so. The growth hormone does go up, and then yeah, it stops. Well, yeah, I, you know, I, I like to to go about eight to ten weeks with hormone, mm -hmm. and then once you start to come off of it, you start you know you lose a little bit of water, but this, the size and the strength usually stays there pretty good with with the growth hormone. Mm -hmm. And okay. uh, you know. <clears throat> 
mild season cycles. And I, I like to take around four to five different types of steroids at one time. Is it like two androgenic and two anabolic, or? It'll be more, it'll be, yeah, i will keep it pretty even like that. Off season? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And as you move into the season, the heavier androgenics are, are come out to some degree? Yeah, heavier, heavier that way, and then, but at the same time, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I uh, like for DECA even, I would, I would probably do, say, uh, about uh, 400 milligrams or four to 800 milligrams per week of the, of the day mm -hmm. alone. And that's usually starting closer to right, the contest. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so before a contest, it might mean uh, eight weeks in the DECA, the, uh, you mentioned, I think, Winstro. Winstro, yeah. And that would be like uh, cc's of that would be approximately. See, that's, uh, again, that's uh, it's usually like four milligrams uh, mm -hmm. per bottle you're taking mm -hmm. about. Uh, two or three bottles per time, like three times a week or so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so if you're using two androgenics and two anabolics uh, prior to, uh, the, the, during the off season, uh, before the event, uh, eight weeks in, you're using more uh, hardening agents, as you call it, or more anabol. That would be how many agents, roughly? I know it changes from... It, you know, that depends on what's available at the time and okay. uh, what's in your budget for your... Uh, mm -hmm their competition. So let's say, uh, you know, if, if you're training for a show and you have, uh, you have a uh, halitestin, cytogen, some type of... Uh, halitestin. Halitestin, <clears throat> I like to take about 30 to 40 milligrams per day. Okay. Uh, starting from about five weeks out or so. Okay. Um, I find it's a hardening type agent for Yeah. You. And uh, cytogen, mm -hmm. that's about four weeks out, and I'm starting out at 50 milli the 250 milligrams. And uh, you take in, you start off at one, going up to two. You like to go two on, one off with that. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> uh, that's that's pretty hard on your system, so you want to kind of, you know, not stay on that too long. Mm -hmm. And then the cytogen, the the uh, the cytogen also uh, is. It's also needed for the, the extra body fat that you burn, mm -hmm. and also uh, it works really well with the growth hormone mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I would say, uh, a lot of people, you know, used to take a lot of Novadex and uh, mm -hmm. Provire and stuff like that for extra hardening effects. Um, you know, I've used you know, both of those at, at different times. Mm. And uh, what else? Well, I okay. <laughs> uh, so many different ways to go on this. Yeah. I mean, uh, so is there any time during the year when you for, you for sure don't take steroids? And right after, uh, well, getting ready, for coming down to competition, like the last week or so, um, discard discard all the steroids, and uh, uh, you know, you tend to look a harder because it's it's all making you hold some kind of water, some kind of mm. in some kind of area. Is there a number of months during the year that you don't take steroids at all? Yeah, I've done, and I've done that during the course of my career. I've uh, <clears throat> actually I've taken a lot of time. Sometimes I would take, I'd do a 12-week cycle, and I would mm -hmm. go off for 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, and I would. Uh, uh, so there's no exact system of change. Right, right. It, it changes, and uh, as you develop and and grow bigger, you start mm -hmm. to uh, uh, change the way you do a lot of things and take a lot of different things and. You know. mm -hmm. Since we've been speaking about GH to some degree already, off-season and on-season, we discussed uh, drugs, uh, steroids in terms of off-season versus on-season, um, and sort of your cyclic pattern, which changes a, gr a great deal. I, my next question would be uh, insulin. Is that ever a consideration in your program? Yes, I've used it uh, for contest prep as far as uh, uh, starting my, uh, my uh, cycles off with uh, uh, you know, helping you gain a little bit more weight before you start to cut down. And um, it's, you know, really well. It's just really dangerous for a lot of people to use it. And uh, you really have to know what you're doing mm. if you're starting to uh, step into that arena. So you, you only take it when you're getting getting size? I did that, but I also took it on um, you know, a carb-up phase uh -huh. uh, during competition. Okay, but you, you don't take it other than maybe the last week before a show then? 
Well, over the last, yeah, the last, last week, the last few days before the show. And then maybe in the off season for how long? Um, just for a few weeks. I never, I never took a long <clears throat> cycle of it, and uh, it's not my favorite thing to do. And okay. Dealing with all that stuff, uh, you know, watching yourself if you're gonna fall asleep or not. It, it's just something that's really dangerous. It's really dangerous. And uh, how about dosage as far as insulin? Dosages, I would, uh, I would go about, if I was going to take it in all season, I was going to do about three, uh, three or four times a day, and I'd space it out uh, every six hours or so for about uh, 12 to 15 uh, IUs, I believe, or something. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm not sure the measurement On a syringe, you're going to see 10, 20, 30. Okay. I would take within the, between the 10 and the 20. Okay. No more than that, though. And that was a three times, three times a day. Three times a day, yeah. Okay. Early in the morning, then in the afternoon, and then in the evening. Is it after workout, before workout? <clears throat> I've done it. I've tried it that way also. I tried it in the middle of my workout, even. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when you're timing it uh, for within that 20 minutes, you're going to be done and you're going to start eating. Mm -hmm. And um, that seemed to work pretty good, too. But I, I just, I never really, you know, ventured off into getting really serious about doing the insulin deal. Mm -hmm. So it was just sort of something you, you, you played with. Yeah, I played with, but never really seriously seen the actual effects of what, what, can, what can be done or whatever. But I, I do know the dangerous sides of it. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I've seen a lot of people get a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of uh, bad reactions from it and you know, been in dangerous, put themselves in dangerous positions from it. Uh, I've seen it firsthand, so I, I do know not to uh, mess with it too much. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, well, the next uh, item I'd, I'd like to discuss with you would be uh, the use of diuretics. Uh, is that been something you've utilized? Oh yeah, I've used that uh, since uh, since I was a teenager. I started using it. It's uh, I never really had a problem with it. I never took a lot. I never took over 75 milligrams. Uh, of like uh, aldactone, mm -hmm. 75 milligrams has been the most ever taken per day of that. My body's very sensitive to it, a lot of water, mm -hmm. and uh, I never had a lot of problems with cramping or anything like that that a lot of people uh, have associated with uh, 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 diuretic use. And the aldactone is used the last week prior to the show? Started, yeah, like the Tuesday mm -hmm. on to the show, mm -hmm. and then like say like a Friday or so, I would start with uh, a little bit of diazide. Mm -hmm. And even when I die, I absolutely open it up and empty a little bit out of it, and uh, so it wouldn't be as strong mm -hmm. as normal. Mm -hmm. And um, that's that's just something I've always been really sensitive about taking, because it tend to take a lot of water out of the muscle. Also, is um, <clears throat> you know, it's just as much as it takes it from between the muscle and the skin, you're gonna mm -hmm. lose a bit of size. And right. So right. I've never been, uh, <clears throat> you know, a big fan of taking a lot of milligrams when it comes to Diuretics. Mm -hmm. uh, but mainly uh, prior to an event, uh, you find that that's the aldactone and the little diazide is effective. Yeah, right? very effective, very effective. It's the difference between uh, a couple places if you didn't take it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, now that uh, I understand they're, they're testing for diuretics uh, in the Olympia uh, only, exclusively, uh, how do you get around that? No, they're, they're doing it for okay. most. Sometimes if you go to a show and they don't test it, you know, you don't, you don't know about it, though. Huh. And, you know, who's to say if, you know, if they're really testing for it or mm -hmm. not. But, but, you know, there are times that people have gotten caught for taking things. Is there any specific way that they were masking age for diuretics or a way to get around? Being... Not that I know of. Okay. Not that I know of. I, um, <clears throat> I think if you lower your sodium a lot more than normal mm -hmm. and uh, play with that, that number and take the... Um, a lot of the natural uh, uh, diuretics that's available over the counter. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that would in combination with the, you know, other things. You know, it's it's hard to. Uh, I've used the insulin, and the insulin tend to suck a little bit of water from uh, into the muscle, from uh, in between the the uh, skin and the muscle. And it, <clears throat> so it helps the, the muscle fibers look as though, as though the skin is tighter around it. This is with. Um... I use the insulin and. Uh, the, uh, and diuretic? With the natural diuretic. I see, I see. With, you know, just all those things together to, to give you a, a pretty good tight look. Okay, okay. Um, so 
uh, like uh, when, when, if you do take diuretics prior to a show, uh, they're usually natural diuretics and not uh, right. real dactone yeah, no, of the diazide. I've tried that also. I've tried it to where I stopped uh, use of diuretics uh, on a Wednesday, mm. and I was tested on a Saturday, mm. and uh, it wasn't in my system. Mm -hmm. um, but then between the Wednesday and the Saturday, <clears throat> your water your water intake has to uh, be at an all-time low. I tried that with taking... The only thing I drank from the Wednesday to the Saturday was a, a diuretic tea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I tried that, and it, it seemed to work pretty well. I only tried it once, though, and just trying different ways to, you know, get the best the best uh, results. Um, I guess my, my question would be, do you think the steroid, the diuretic test is, is real? I think it's real. Okay. I don't want to test, uh, you know, risk losing all yeah. the money or, yeah. you know, it's not saying, because there's not much... Uh, you know, discipline behind getting busted for it, but losing that money is the uh, that's the biggest thing in, uh, at this point in time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As a pro athlete, I, yeah. I understand, sure. Um, anything really scary ever happened to you with uh, diuretic use or GH use or insulin use? Or um, <clears throat> I mean. You feel the effects when you take insulin as far as uh, you get lightheaded, sweating a lot, you're scrambling to, to get some, some kind of uh, sugar in your mm -hmm. system or whatever. Um, I've always had, uh, when I got checkups for steroids, I've always had, you know, uh, you know, you know, great results from that. Everything's always been fine. So you do recommend <laughs> checkups? Yeah, I definitely recommend checkups. Uh, not so much right when you're in the competition phase because you're taking a lot of different mm -hmm. steroids and the results you're going to get back is going to be pretty mm -hmm. alarming probably because mm -hmm. it's not going to be normal. But uh, after you discard taking anything <clears throat> for, say, uh, six to eight weeks or so, and then you go to the doctor or whatever, then I think if, if everything's back to normal, I think, I think you're doing pretty much the right thing. Uh, some people are, uh, are getting, you know, some bad results as far as... Uh, there are different, uh, the sperm count now and mm -hmm. their uh, liver panel uh, results are coming back, you know, still kind of high. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's, uh, you know, you need to step, take a look back and see, is this all worth it for you? Or, mm -hmm. you know, you're getting, you know, is the, the push and shove, is, you know, really... Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Yeah. Yeah. How, do you, how do you feel about, about competing in today's arena, on today's stage? It, <clears throat> you know? Well, <clears throat> I, the only thing that the problem I have when people uh, people are acting like uh, it's all about drugs and mm -hmm. you know it's it's you know it seems to put a bad taste in your mouth when you see people that just, they just really like they brag about it and they like to take steroids they like to <laughs> do this and that mm -hmm. you know because I'm still <clears throat> one of the guys that like to push hard and uh, mm -hmm. train intensely and. You know, I, I still want to see exactly what I can do as far as I can push myself to to get the development that I was looking for and, mm -hmm. you know, from when I started this whole crusade. <laughs> do, you ever, do you ever think to yourself that, that, geez, I think we're pushing genetics to the ultimate edge, that it's, it's getting pretty risky? Sometimes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like when he has problems and or like uh, Ahmed Benazisa or... Andreas Moons, or does it like make you think, go and go take two steps backwards and go, wait a minute? Yeah, definitely. You, know, just you have to. You'd be uh, crazy not to. Mm -hmm. And you'd think that, oh, it won't happen to me. I, I think it could happen. It mm -hmm. could happen to anyone. Mm -hmm. um, and is there any suggestions, uh, any, any words of wisdom <clears throat> you might give the, our viewers who are looking at you guys? That's where I want to be in life. I think that, uh, <clears throat> first of all, I would suggest. If you really don't have what it takes to to be one of those guys, you need to really be honest with yourself and say, you know, I could appreciate what they're doing, but it is not for me to to step, you know, that far into uh, what's dangerous and what's, you know, large, what's you know, what's good for yourself. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then for secondly, I, had, uh, I suggest if you did, you know, want to compete and you're not you're not going to go pro and you know whatever. I wouldn't do anything dangerous, and I wouldn't do if you. I don't take anything. First of all, I suggest not to. 
mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. it's better not to and you live longer and you gotta, you know, not, you know, you're gonna have a, a lot easier life all around mm -hmm. if you didn't. <clears throat> but if you did chose, choose to, then I would suggest, you know, take it as little as possible to get some results that you're looking for, like I said. So you think the steroids and the GH and the insulin and uh, other agents can put lim don't, can limit your life and put more stress on your body? I would I would I would assume. So. Okay, I mean I, I'm you know understand of course and you know I, I've been where you are. I'm, I retired some time ago, but uh, I'm watching it our sport progress and you know I don't, I don't I, it's no it's it seems to be have gotten to the point now where it's. I don't know, maybe, I don't know, you, you should answer this rather than me. Is it chemical warfare now? In some ways, yeah. I would, I would say, yeah. Mm. I mean, when you're, uh, when you're out there uh, away from home and you're, you're taking different things and, yeah. you know, I've been places and getting a lot of bloody noses and mm. things of that nature. Mm. You know, it's, you sort of think, oh, my God, you know, mm. what's going mm. on? Or, uh, you know, it's, it's, sure. that, can, it's, that can scare you after a while. Um, on an annual basis, say if you say if like uh, um, if we look at the last few years back, uh, understanding the, the growth hormone and the expense of that, uh, uh, I think you mentioned what up to nine cc's. Uh, nine IU's, yeah. Nine IU's. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, you can tell growth wasn't around when I was competing. <laughs> <laughs> at least it was around, but I <laughs> bought a new car instead. Right. Yeah. Um, um, What's your annual expenditure, approximately, on, on getting ready for an event? Can you put <coughs> a rough number on that? Close to around 5,000 to some, some people might go up to 10,000 or so. Mm, so you think At least 5,000. That's even with the, uh, the growth hormone being involved, you know? That's at a minimum, yeah. So you say five to 10,000 yeah, minimum? Yeah. So it could, could go as high as... Depends on the person, you know? I mean, I heard people say $100,000. I guess it's possible. It can go up. I've, but hmm. some of the things I've done, I've done with 5,000 in that area. I understand. With, that's all drug use, yeah. Depending on what kind of deals you're getting and, and you know. What's available much. and, yeah. uh, of course, what, how much the, the price of it and. Yeah. And like I said, it's, you know, I don't think, and that's not even a big number for what I'm doing. That's uh, um, hmm. what I've achieved on that amount right. of money of uh, stuff is, I think it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, in your view, do you think it would be healthier if, if it was uh, not not a, such a classified as a class three drug, and it was more through doctor you know, medical Definitely. intervention? In other countries, you, you yeah. know, it's available like that to have doctors and uh, people that work closely with you, because it's going to people are going to do it anyway. They're mm -hmm. going to do it no matter what the cost, no matter what uh, uh, kind of trouble you can get into. It's going to mm -hmm. happen. You know, you see it every day. Mm -hmm. But it's not also in, in bodybuilding, but it's also in, the, in baseball and football and, uh, right. and right. track and, you know, things like that. You know, sports like that, gymnastics, they're getting, you know, caught mm -hmm. all the time. Swimming and all that stuff. You think it's worse now than it's ever been in all sports? <laughs> Definitely. There's mm -hmm. junior high school kids yeah. taking pills and doing whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's pretty, it's amazing. And how old do you think a person should, should be, they consider? possible steroid program. We're not making recommendations here, of course. We're not pro-steroids. We're merely, merely talking about reality, but... I would suggest educating yourself on it as many, as long as you can stand it and wait as long as you can. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, if you can be in your mid-20s or upper-20s, then that would be a lot better than, you know, starting off, uh, mm -hmm. about, you know, early teens and whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um... Well, I understand you do have health concerns, and uh, it makes total sense that you would have health concerns, and that uh, you look at the risk versus the benefit, and this is your chosen profession, and, and you pursue it uh, along those lines. I think every athlete I, I speak with feels the same way, and I, I hear they're coming from you, a, a concern, but yet uh, you know, you're, not, you're not out to commit suicide. Right, exactly. You've got to do it as strategically and as healthy as possible exactly. in order to compete in that arena. Right. Um, this stuff that we read about in the magazines called roid rage, does that really exist in your opinion? I think it exists. But uh, I think a lot of individuals are, uh, that are already have a temper and it's just heightened. I think it's something you gotta learn how to control. Mm -hmm. 
because you it, it is an aggressive drug it can make you really aggressive you're already aggressive mm -hmm. and uh, you're gonna be you know stand at, at risk and get really upset and not be able to control yourself uh i remember the first two years when i was taking it, it had to you know i had to be like wait a minute you mm -hmm. know and a little bit more excited and you know it's just it just someone crossing the street you know, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know? but it's uh yeah i think uh I think it's real, mm -hmm. but I think people label a lot of people having roid rage when it's not really roid rage. Mm -hmm. I think you don't have to be on a, a cycle to get really mad. People prove that every day in the news. I think it's, it enhances your natural uh, aggressiveness. Definitely. You know, some, or your natural personality to some degree. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things uh, that I also want to discuss, and I between masking agents of any kind. I mean, granted, uh, uh, the, the, you're able to get around the diuretic test based upon, you know, limiting your t the time you're on certain diuretics and taking other er situations. Are there any masking agents that you've ever utilized that uh, were a benefit? No. no. You know, you hear about things that's, this and that, but I, I'm not one to try to take a chance on something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. How about um, things like... Uh, Escaline, uh, where you inject into the muscle itself to mm -hmm. temporarily in the tissue, and does that have any benefit in, in your protocol? Yeah, that's that's definitely another benefit that uh, people can, you know, it probably puts you up another spot or two if you if you had it mm -hmm. escaline and you had the right uh, put it in the right places and you know, but a lot of people are abusing different effect uh, different uh, substances like that. And it just don't look right. You know, mm -hmm. it's not what we start out to do. If, it's, if if that was the case, then why even why even try to train the calves when you know, you're just sticking them with all kinds of different things? And mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I'm like I said, I'm just, I still like to see what I can do myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, it makes me when you said that, uh, I still like to see what I can do myself. If there was a test where you know nobody could take anything, otherwise they'd be busted immediately. If there was a really you know, test that would create a fair playing field. And if drugs were completely eradicated, would you be in favor of that? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Let's see what it, let's see what we all can do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I've often and I've often thought about that. You know, if we could really have a, a test where uh, where no one could really pass the test and use any kind of drugs, and they couldn't compete that way, and you know. Yeah, well, definitely. That'd a lot of that. I think a lot of people feel like you. It's like, especially the guys like yourself that uh, you know they're doing real well. They're Competing in, in, in you know the, the top shows and, and placing real high and it's like it's like you know it's, it's like it's getting old you know. Oh yeah, I would, I would love that. That's what I hear and that's uh, <laughs> sort of the way I feel. But I'm not gonna. But just you know, like I said, if everyone's falling by the rules and everyone's gonna do, you know, exactly right. what you know. Just, yeah, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Just an interesting point that you brought to, you brought up that I sort of thought about for a second. Mm -hmm. um, Besides the the you know the, the drugs like uh, we the steroids and the GHs and the insulin and the diuretics or are there any other uh, like andros or is there anything like that you've utilized that would you feel is de definitely uh, worthy of, uh, of of calling a you know a steroid like substance? I think Angostin is uh, is good. Mm -hmm. I've uh, tested myself and only using Angostin uh, for a period of time. Mm -hmm. And training totally without steroids, and uh, I would push uh, some pretty good weight. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you ever use it in conjunction with uh, the steroids? In no. Oh, it's usually in the off season. Yeah, definitely. If if I were going to use energy, I use it by itself. Mm -hmm. uh, in the off season, after you've done, been done taking been taking steroids, you know, during fight preseason and the steroid the contest is over, uh, are there, are there um, Basically, uh, agents you use to bring your testosterone back to natural levels, or HCG, or yeah, I've used HCG or the Clomid. Uh, Clomid. I use those two together. Uh, I used them together before. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. I, I used uh, you know pretty good amounts of HCG. Yeah, it's it, it's it's good. You know, if you can get a hold of it or whatever, from, then I just uh, I just relax for a while and just take time off. Mm -hmm. So let it go back naturally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are like some of the amounts of Clomid or HCG? Or any, any idea of dosages to recall? Ooh, you can get like 10,000 uh, 
I use uh, the uh, ACG, and I take that a, a couple of times uh, per week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Clomid uh, it would be like yeah, would, tablet wise. Yeah, I don't remember the uh, milligrams mm -hmm. on those, but uh, I would take that every day for about a week or so. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, maybe like three to four tabs a day. Mm -hmm. and, uh, do you think Nova, Novadex is, a, is is useful occasionally? Yeah, but uh, I guess recently a lot of people uh, started to believe that uh, it's uh, toxic, pretty toxic to your liver, and uh, uh -huh. uh, you know it's not exactly what people thought it was at first. So, and also had some some way of fighting against uh, your natural growth hormone levels. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard that uh, stated by a number of uh, the guys. Yeah. So people started uh, shying away from the. The Novadex, mm -hmm. and I'm one of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, is there anything other blocking agent uh, like that you would consider in, in replacing Novadex? Um, there, there is, and it's slipping my mind right now. The Viren? No, there's another one. It's a 50 milligram uh, um, drug. Oh, the T. Uh, Tesla. Yes. Mm. Tesla. You think that's a worthy substance? Oh, yeah. That's really good. And how long would you take that? A short duration? Um, yeah, for the duration of your cycle. For the whole, the, the whole cycle, I would take oh, that. Oh, during the cycle? Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. So if you're... 50, 50 milligrams uh, on up to uh, 200 milligrams uh, towards the end, close to the competition. And then do you just stop? Or do you get off slowly? Or I always get off slowly. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I would um, just stop everything then. So it's a 15-week cycle or something like that? If you can get that much, yeah. Out, yeah. So it might be something up <laughs> to that. If you're going to get one bottle this time, then you, you, know, you deal, deal with, with it. That, yeah. I understand. I understand. What's, did anything scary ever happen to you? Uh, that gave you an ill effect or a, uh, even a, a look that wasn't. Uh, yeah, one time uh, I ended up, uh, I uh, tried to inject it to my calves to see what would happen if, uh, if they were, you know, fuller looking and. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, but uh, <coughs> I uh, I injected into it. It was, you know, really painful time, and it was uh, um, what was it you injected into? Uh, it was a regular testosterone. Oh. It wasn't even like a or is it, I mean, not like a a, a, a swelling size type thing. Right. But people people nowadays are shooting like all over their bodies, yeah. from biceps to triceps to. I think you really need to be for what you're doing because you know you don't know what's under you like you know you're shooting in the dark mm -hmm. you know and uh, it's it's really dangerous you can hit some nerves or create some damage you have no no idea what you're gonna do you know mm -hmm. but um <clears throat> you know with some of my calf is uh, I don't know if the the muscle is uh, atrophied a little mm -hmm. right there so mm -hmm. like the muscle's not really there anymore so. That was enough for me right there. I don't mm. do anything like that anymore. Some kind of tissue damage. Yeah, right. tissue damage. It's not. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's not what I was meant to do. <laughs> mm -hmm.